All right, one and all, welcome back to Age of Empires for action. We haven't checked in on her in a while. Don't care about why. I'm sorry, buddy. Had enough of you on land. This is the one that we've been missing. Faye Chan back at it. I can't believe it, dude. It's been like, what, three weeks since we, since we cast a Faye game? I saw she was on Mongols. I fought Magadai straight away. And Magadai against Iobids would be the meme fiesta of the century. Um, Iobids is like one of the hardest counters to Mongols. There's not many other civs they have a big issue with. And Wham is already getting spicy. It's the logistics wing. <laughs> Wait, the logistics wing for... Are you kidding me? So we got MSN in chat who was telling me about a replay that I need to check where he was trying to do what I was talking about with dervishes as a Healy unit in fights in Feudal and whatnot. And this might be what Wham is doing. But first of all, <laughs> he's going to use it as a premium scout to shove his deer in. Wait, dude, is everyone doing this build I talked about now? So this means I get 10% of revenue from tournaments from you guys, right? I mean, if it catches on. Do I, do I get to like stake my claim on this? I don't think anyone was trying it. So for those that don't know, about I think two or three patches ago, Dervish just got changed so that now, when you go for the logistics wing play, it used to be that you got some Dervishes for free and then the active heal got increased. You still get an active heal increase, uh, but what they've done is they changed it so that depending on the age you get it at, you get a aura around your all times. It's no longer a toggleable thing that's needed. It's just always there. It's an insanely powerful tool. Like, I think this has been slept on way too long. And if me ranting about it for weeks and weeks on end is what it took, and then like one small kid from Denmark who says that he's 6.2, but he's probably like in the pictures online just standing on a stepping ladder um, if that's what it takes him going to match up against people like Wham and whatnot to show off to make them go hmm because I mentioned this to Wham in Spain I actually mentioned this to Wham in Spain and he hadn't thought about it and I don't want to say he brushed it off but I don't think he took it entirely seriously so I kind of want to see it work now just so that he kind of has to nod his head. I mean, in fairness, this is a matchup that already inherently should favor the, the Ibits, right? The weird part about it, though, is what they're building means it should be weirder for Wham. He's going Desert Raiders, but his opponent's building Magadai. And I think he's realized that's a mistake now because he's slowed down production. He's saving up for the Castle Age, and we should be seeing Growth Wing here, right? You could go Reinforcement Wing, but if your opponent's massing Magadai, what's the point, right? And big shout out to Faye for this. This is the correct call. You need the deer stone for the Khan Hunter in the first place. Just build the trade post in the corner and go from there. Wow, I'm on the move, though. <laughs> so you're going to see how impactful this can be, especially in this situation where you're up against Magadai, because Magadai are low base damage, right? So they hit for five. However, this is quite a few Magadai. It might prove slightly more problematic. Unless you spread your damage. Look at that. Look at that. Remember the old Ottoman Imam build and how it just got countered by mass ranged? This is the difference. Oh no, we can't win this fight. Runs away. <laughs> it's actually insane how much more effective this is in the Ottoman version. And, you know, I've been a big believer for years now that Feudal Age healing is OP. If you think about it conceptually within the confines of the game, it is broken in any meta that is prolonged feudal. And right now, I think we are one in the, one of the most healthy metas we've ever had, but also one where prolonged feudal is viable, is feasible, and you can force the other player to do it. So Iobids, the interesting part about them is in the last few months, they've really evolved beyond just a fast castle sif. They're still going to do it. Like if I click now, even though the capture rate doesn't show it, it's on the way. But they're capable of playing along Feudal. And this, I think, will become one of the backbones. The other one, of course, being Growth Wing, because you get three extra villages, which is insane that early in the game. But the Dervishes just make you so much more efficient unit by unit. Yeah, and MSN. Uh, wait, did you only just hear... Dude, we were just talking about this already, buddy. And I was saying you got the idea from me. So, you know, all paths lead back to Pigeon. In a way, I am there in the top 100 on the leaderboard. I think that counts. <laughs> oh, this is cool, though. The way he's playing it as well means he's got a great blocker to nearby relics. So you can kind of hoover them up. This is an outrageous spawn, by the way. I think there's only four relics, right? Oh, no. Okay, I'm blind. The fifth's over here. But 
this feels quite biased towards Wham. Free on his side. But he's in a good position to essentially take away the hardest relics from Faye. My guy's still trying to raid at home. I mean, it just doesn't work though. And Wham already has Horseman on the way. Love the Blacksmith timing. He's prepping for the Undermesh. New villages are going to come out. So all of a sudden, Wham ahead by five villies. It's poor old Faye. She's only got three of these traders so far. And Wham, that's kind of creative, actually. Using the Dervishes for the Sacred Sites. He can come for the Relics afterwards, right? Usually we see Relic grab, then Sacred Site. But the pathing means this is the furthest out thing. And it's in a position that should be very hard for Faye to contest. She's trying to make a way over now, but the delay might cost her. It's a good anticipatory read, though, because realistically, if there's a Dervish here, he should come here afterwards. To do that, he'd have to walk up into this choke point, which means Faye should get a free kill on this Dervish. Should be in the optimal What? Oh, wow. I'm a little bit slow on the reaction there. So it will be a kill. Scout's going to go down as well. A bit ambitious here with these Desert Raiders. I guess Wham's just trying to buy time, right? Because he's shifting to the west side to start bringing in relics. We've got the Veteran Seaver Horseman coming in. They're already hitting the trade. There is a rush to get an outpost up. But if Wham sees this and just targets it down, which he does see... Love that. He peels one over. Veterans, he just came in. So that's additional ranged arm and additional health here. The Magadai do practically no damage now. Villager goes down. There's no Yam. And there's no hope in hell she can win this fight now. Ouch. Expensive exchange. Another horseman's going to trade out. If it's one for one, it's a good trade for Wham, remember. And this is only wave number one. Camel Lance is to follow this up. We've got Archers being added in. Faye is desperately flailing her way up into Castle H here. But let's be totally real. We all know what she's going to build when she reaches Castle, don't we? Can I get some guesses in the chat as to what Faye will build when she arrives in Castle? Archie Rangers, guys. Like, it's not a hard question. And then more Magadai. <laughs> she's obsessed with this. We've watched her build only Magadai up against Mass HRE Tower Defense before. She's willing to do anything for the memes, but... I mean, even with her memeing, like, the opening wasn't a bad idea against the Iobids. It's just genuinely, the Dervish play is a really smart heads-up read by Iobids. I hope we see more of this, because I think there is definitely credence to this build. And we saw limited value to it, right? Like, imagine if you're in a game where you have a prolonged feudal. Prolonged feudals are going to be bonkers for this build. I stopped reading when we said about Delhi buffs. Magic of Six Sites could only be de decapped by religious students and heroes. No, just God no. I would like to see. I think I said in my video recently. I'd love to see like a limited time game mode where any unit can capture or decapture Sacred Sites. That'd be cool to see. Awesome raid coming in, and hello Freya. You back? You have fun at nursery. You made friends. Wow. Wham's well, not making friends in this one. He's making enemies for life. Hi, Freya. Yeah. <laughs> she says this all the time now. She's like, that me, Freya. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God I'm not casting Age of Mythology live. Can you imagine how confusing that would be for people? Oh my god, though. What happened to Faye's army? I get distracted by a baby for a few seconds and she's lost everything. I mean, this game is practically over, guys. Faye is on life support. If you could even call it that at this stage. She'll try to drag her heels through the dirt. Like my daughter when she doesn't want to leave somewhere. But the reality is she's going to be leaving this map for loss. Magadai only, maybe if your opponent wasn't building Mass Horseman. <laughs> I'm going to speed this up a bit. I still think this will probably appear on the YouTube channel because it's a preview of what I think is going to be coming. The Dervish logistics play is really cool. I don't think this is a true show and tell. I hopefully will find that. But it's definitely a stepping stone in the right direction. The problem for Wham, like, I, I hope he tests this more because the problem is when you queue into Faye and you know she's doing this kind of crap, it's really hard to gauge whether like this strategy is good or bad. 
he'll now have an inkling of whether it felt good, but he, you know, he didn't play it out fully because he couldn't play it out fully because his opponent built Magadai and never changed. Why are we? Oh no! <laughs> oh wow! He walled off the trade. It's a beautiful move as well because he has the berries and the deer in the area, so there's so much value, and also it's easily wallable after the fact. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. I mean, raid points for Mass Magadai are kind of limited here. I respect the fact that Faye is not stopping. You know, she's like, well, I came 14, 15 minutes in this game. What's a few minutes more? And the timing might be on point here. Forces the council, gets the bounty, and gets the raid here under the villagers. Oh my god, the Magadai! This could be it. This could be big, but there's a return fire coming in. The horseman reading into the Mongol economy. It's a villager killing race right now. One that Faye should be able to win with a Magadai, but the archers are now reacting. So Faye has to shuffle out the other side. Tail end of the engagement. She is ahead by a few villagers, but the wolves are now coming up on the east side. Wham! He fell for it once. He refuses to make it a second. Oh, are you kidding me? I was ready to write this game off, but man, you see the power of Magadai. You are probably all having flashbacks. Those that were there at launch to Magadai OP, please nerf in the most early days of Age of Empires 4. These are the type of clips that are nightmare fuel. They're the ones that keep you awake at night. However, the other nightmare fuel is losing all those Magadai in one misstep. The wall going up was not expected. Archers cut off the reinforcements. Horsemen are now going to be able to just dent this. The thing is, Magadai are getting the bonus damage, sure, but also they're getting so much bonus damage against them. What makes it worse is when they're targeting down this Camel Lancer. <laughs> this is so silly. Oh my god. The fact that, once again, she's holding on even this much is kind of impressive. Funnily enough, guys, Villagers plus Magadai might win this game. Right? Because you have the blocker. Hello again, Freya. What's up? Yeah, you go bounce on the, the trampoline. I gotta see if Faye can bounce back from this. Okay, get a mummy. So second TC is now aligned. I mean, the trade just isn't there, right? Like, Faye's not even trying to add to it anymore. So it's one TC versus two. Relic count is already free in favor of Wham. The Archer Master's getting close to the base. Like, so far, the Horseman was struggling a bit because of the heal and the extra DPS because of Kurotai. The problem now is when you've got this many Archers, they will instantly kill a Magadai. So the healing doesn't matter. And you can't kite either because even with the Khan effect, you're up at 4.75 tower range. These Archers have five. And the Ram's coming in. Speed this up a bit, wham. On the verge of winning this, Faye now trying to rely on some static defenses to maybe give her a hope, a boon back into this game. Second round now being built. Kurotai moves to the front line. Wham. Wham's rams. Easy way of dealing with outposts. So if this was a spiral defense plan from Faye, it's going to be underwhelming. Meanwhile, elsewhere, sacred sites are being locked in. So it looks like Wham is going to have multiple ways of winning this one. The Magadai is still trying to break through the wall. So close, guys. Only 1,065 more shots. Oh, she's now diving in. Nice going on the range there. Remember, like, with the 5.5 time range now from the Khan Hunter, you can slightly out range with him, but the Magadai themselves are going to have to go in range. And unfortunately, the formation shuffle tends to put the Khan Hunter at the back. So he got sniped first, which means you're now outranged by these archers. Sprint and placement. Wait, we don't even have one. <laughs> I mean, Faye's just not bothering to spend the stone, it seems. Villages are now going to be pulled. Archer mass has been reduced. But the second wave is now arriving, folks. On the back side of this, the horsemen are raiding into the economy, and that's a lot of lost villages looking for a home they'll never find. Kortai right down to half HP. If the Kortai dies, this is over. Like, if the Kortai goes down... There's nothing left then. Oh, thank you, Freya. She brought me a flower. I'll be sure to drop this off at Faye's grave. There you go, Dallin. Take it. Now, she was willing to take that flower, but Faye... She doesn't want to take the reeves coming her way. 
Magadai counts still somehow at 13. I'm actually impressed she sustained the numbers as much as she has. Part of that, due to the buff, the changes in cost and whatnot. Kurutai has shifted the other side, but only 1300 HP doesn't make it reliable. The TC now being sieged. Magadai count never really feels like it's increasing at this point. And it almost feels like Wham is just playing with his food, guys. He has 10 horsemen and four lancers. If they shoot up here, it should just be curtains closed. Funnily enough, even if they don't show up here, with the deer running out, Faye is going to run out of food. Faye is obsessed. I mean, guys, guys, dude, like, I, I think this is where we need to really come together as a community to raise some money for Faye. She's struggling right now, okay? Her keyboard has been wearing down. Only a few buttons work on it. Like, at this point, only the Q key works. Oh, sorry, uh, the R key works, right? So that's why she's only building Magadai. Because otherwise, she'd have to click on all these buildings and then, like, click, click, click. She doesn't even have shift click. So the reason she's building Magadai is she only has one key on the keyboard. So, yeah. I think we need to borrow a new keyboard, guys. Because you are technically... It is within the rules allowed to build other units of the Mongols. Say hey, what? I guess another way to spin it is you've got to respect the tenacity to stick with Magadai when they are not winning you the game. The village is now in trouble. The Kurotai on 750 HP and burning. And this is just Faye enjoying life at this stage. I don't know how you enjoy these type of moments, but... Her obsession is going to get her killed. Four Magadai left alive. The villagers are no longer really going to be safe. Because once this Kurotai goes down, these bad boys are all dead. <laughs> Let me know what you're thinking about this, though, guys. I mean, kind of a, a Memology 101 by Fair as we've come to expect. But theoretically, conceptually, the idea of the dervishes. I'm going to try to find a few more recordings to dissect this. Because I don't think we saw it in its full picture. But I think you saw the potential. Those few Magadai couldn't even take out a Desert Raider cleanly. They couldn't keep in range because the Dervish is quicker, right? So Wham always had this flirtational element about his positioning where he could get very close, he could tease a fight, and then get away with it. And even if you go Horseman, right? Like, if, like you really want to go Horseman against Desert Raider plus Horseman on the other side. It's kind of like the best way to think of Dervish here is kind of like the, the king, the English king, in a prolonged Horseman's map. It's the same effect. And later in the game, it can be just as impactful. Of course, try trying to be safe with the crossbows. Not to be denied anymore. Faye finally waves the white flag while chanting America as she sinks six feet into the ground.